cruise to New Haven. Only the paddle steamer Waverly had the unique distinction of displaying such a destination in 166 years of Clyde paddlers. And so it was on Saturday the 15th of April, we set sail down the Clyde, past the repair basins and the long deserted slipways of her builders, A.J. Ingalls and company. Wherein beside the river stands a notice which ought to read, dead slow for 1100 years. The start of our 1978 season was heralded by the breaking out the top of the main mast truck of our brand new house flag. The passengers on the after deck viewed the scenery passing downstream, including the quaint old chain-driven Renfrew car ferry. And one of the younger brethren, the fraternity, a small yacht going down for an early start to her summer season. Thence on, down past the old shipyards of John Brown, where it was built, the Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, and the current QE2. And so we passed underneath the Erskine Bridge, built at this height to facilitate the passage downstream of the QE2, which was still in the course of fitting out upriver. Probably no other ship of its size will ever pass down this way again. And so it was on a cold, dreech morning we arrived at the Esso refinery to bunker the Waverley in preparation for her journey to Milford Haven and thence to New Haven. Ian Muir came on board just in time to take part in boat drill. And that includes everybody, crew, passengers. Quick check with the dipstick revealed that all was well. While ashore, some of our keen paddle steamer preservation society members had come down to wish us bon voyage. Yes, Patty, it really does read cruise to New Haven. Jealousy will get you nowhere. This resplendent in her new coat of paint you can see the steel protective plates put over the forward windows to protect the glass should we encounter inclement weather on the way down. And so we cast off and proceed down the Clyde non-stop to Milford Haven. On what is, for the Waverley, a very unique trip for herself and her passengers. Even in these early hours of the morning, the Waverley made a fine sight as she beat her way down the river at a steady 14 knots, passing Scott Lithgow's yard where they build super tankers in two halves and then weld them together afloat. On down past Custom House Quay at Greenock and round to, dare we say it, the Caledonian McBrain Pier at Gurok, where she occasionally called in her Caledonian McBrain days. Now we came round to the famous clock lighthouse which signifies the end of the river and the start of the estuary. And as she pointed her bows round the corner, the Firth of Clyde opened up before her. Down past the Noon Pier, the home of many a Glasgow Clyde holidaymaker. wasn't long before we were beating down past the new Inverkip nuclear power station, whilst the power station within the Waverley 
drove her along at a steady 44 revolutions per minute the beat of a metronome polished and gleaming brass as would one expect in a Clyde paddle steamer is visible for all to see and admire and as we go down river we pass the another out of work tanker and the snow covered peaks of the island of Arran and then come across Ailsa Craig known affectionately to many Glasgow Belfast passengers as Paddy's Milestone we sailed through the Irish Sea in calm conditions all night and the following morning came round St David's Head and across St David's Bay to pick up the Milford Haven pilot Polishing time, Sundays included, meant uh, no different routine for either crew or officers. And eventually, the Clan Reef, the Milford Haven pilot boat, came out alongside us to bring aboard the pilot who would take us into the harbour. Borodarty Taffy Boy A crisp house flag flying proudly there in the sky gave our floating Magnus Pike alias Battle Crags a chance to demonstrate how sh flags should be hoisted on halyards Coming into Milford Haven, we were surprised to see a 300,000 ton tanker called the Andros Titan being removed from the dock. And we thought this was rather a magnanimous gesture in order to allow a little 700 ton paddler in to her place. A quick inspection of the paddle boxes revealed everything in perfect order. So it wasn't long before we had rebunkered and set off once again towards Land's End. Suitably fed on the Sunday lunch, a beautiful Sunday lunch I might add, of roast Norfolk turkey. The seagulls followed us in anticipation of a few scraps and leftovers. Whilst in the forward lounge, Margaret Russell sat wondering what the weather conditions would be like at Land's End. And our friendly newspaper correspondent, John Easton, scribed madly for his piece in the Glasgow Herald. Would the weather conditions be like this at Land's End? We hoped not. We needn't have worried because as we went round the long ships in the night of armour, this was the conditions that prevailed. Up on the bridge, our very keen Paddle Steamer Preservation Society member helmed the ship for quite long periods in various watches, complete with his Waverley Lum or uh, his red white and black funnel which also attracted the attention of HMS Jupiter which sent out a helicopter to investigate this quaint two-funneled ship closer inspection revealed that this quaint two-funneled ship was also driven by paddles which excited this little helicopter so much that he went back and came back went and came back for a second look at us much to the delight of the passengers who produced cameras in great profusion. 
Whilst inside the bridge, John Brown, our Liverpool pilot, who had come and taken five days' leave and come on board to have the privilege of coming round Land's End with the Waverley. Plotted his courses with Jimmy Addison. Later on, at the change of watch, Cameron Fernie, who had flown 3,000 miles from the Persian Gulf to be on the same trip, took over watch noon on that day. And a quick check with our newly installed Decker navigator merely confirmed the position he was already sure he was in. Good weather up the English Channel allowed us to take the steel plates out that protected the diner saloon and hang up a new house flag. Cameron Fernie applied great brasso to the ship's bow. And as we came along the cliffs towards New Haven, we signaled our approach. The loud blast in the wave of his funnel whistle and hung up the letter P to signify that we had acquired a pilot who came aboard very gingerly. And here we are arrived once again in New Haven and a grand sight it was to see the Waverley steam in to the harbour on the outset of her new venture in the south.